Hi, this is Maros. I'm a software engineer for over 10 years and I also build a profitable side business as iOS developer. In this week's episode, we're gonna talk about some struggles of mine when it comes to trading tracker and customer support. Trying to build a profitable app is not easy. Not only it's hard to get the users pay for your app, but you also have to keep your users and customers happy. For example, by not having some serious bugs in your app. But if your app is as complex as Trading Tracker is, you probably know how easy it is to introduce a bug by mistake. That's when the tests come into place. Tests are an extremely important part of apps that have a complex business logic and some calculations, which Trading Tracker for sure has. Now, it's important to say that not every single app needs unit tests, especially if you are building the app alone and trying to ship it as fast as possible to get some early feedback from users. But as your project grows, tests are essential because they can uncover some hidden bugs and issues you might have overlooked. And not only that, Tests are very useful even before building a business logic. This process is also called test-driven development. You basically write your unit tests, make them fail. Then implement the logic and make them fail again. And again, and again, and again. Until they succeed. I've used this multiple times throughout this project as well as in my full-time work. You see, now we are diving deeper into software engineering and I would also like to put an emphasis on a software architecture. If you use a proper clean architecture, testing is a piece of cake. For example, Trading Tracker is built on top of the clean architecture. What does it mean? Well, long story short, there are three layers. Domain layer, data layer and presentation layer. I don't want to get too deep into clean architecture, but the most important layer is the domain one. All business logic lies there. This is what you want to test. If done correctly, domain layer knows nothing about other parts of the app and can be tested very easily. When it comes to trading tracker, the most important feature of the app is the import feature. Users can simply import a CSV files with their trading data and the app will parse the data and calculate everything they need to know. Since the users rely on this data, I made a big amount of effort so that this feature works properly and is thoroughly tested. The algorithm to calculate the metrics is the same for each trading platform. But as you can see, the way to parse the data differs from one trading platform to another. Some platforms use very simple CSV files, others use HTML files. The main goal is to parse the data and get the same data structure for each platform. And this is where the biggest issue of Trading Tracker is actually. There are so many trading platforms that there is no way for me to support all of them. For some, I implemented the import feature only by having one sample file provided by one user. Fortunately enough, for the majority of platforms, this works perfectly fine. There are some, however, that work only for some specific file structures. For example, this one, MetaTrader 5, very popular trading platform used mainly by Forex traders, uses HTML files to export the data. When I first implemented this importer, I just used regular expressions to get the exact part of the file I needed to parse the data. However, for some users the file might look slightly different from the file I used to build the regular expressions. And so it's not working for all of the users, unfortunately. Why I use regular expressions? I don't know, it was the first solution that came into my mind and it stayed that way. A couple of days ago it really got me thinking though what to do with this importer as more and more users reported these issues. And that's when another solution came into my mind. Parsing the HTML structure rather than HTML string. There are some libraries for Swift that will parse HTML file for you and construct a structure of Swift objects that you can then traverse and find the right part of the data. And so that's what I will do now. This is how it's gonna work. The HTML file looks like this. And the part which is used for importing trades is this deals table. 
So the user will select the HTML file from the file picker, then the app will try to parse the HTML file by using the Swift Soup library. And with enough luck, I will be able to select the right HTML deals table and get all rows and columns. From there, it should be pretty easy to convert this data into trading data the app needs. Ok, let's implement this now. With this HTML parsing implemented, it hopefully will work for all users no matter how the HTML file looks like. It's still important however for the file to have the correct columns. That shouldn't be a problem though because the columns are called the same for everyone using MetaTrader 5. What I also wanted to talk about are negative reviews. When I first started, I used to get so bummed out about every single bad review, but today it motivates me to improve the app. This issue we fixed today is also an example of what once was a negative review and today it's a huge improvement of the import feature for many customers. It's important not to get too bent out of shape when a negative review comes in. It's all a part of the game and it's important to play it right. Yes, some reviews can be very hateful without any particular reason, but those can be very easily ignored. So now the only thing that remains is to release this to the App Store and write a couple of emails to the customers impacted by this issue. I hope you liked this video and if so, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Take care.